Welcome back, dear viewers. Um, we've just had a beautiful recitation from Brother Ibrahim regarding the ziyara of Sayyidah Zainab. Um, God bless him. He always does um, make the mornings beautiful. Um, so on this segment, we are going to be talking about um, a heavy topic. Um, but as always, we have the professional with us who's going to talk us through and hopefully understand more. And um, the topic today is about self-harm um, and really our understanding of it or lack of understanding of it. Um, Perhaps in a community we are in denial that it happens to our children or to people that we know. Um, so as ever, join me in welcoming um, Sister Barak Hussain, who's a psychotherapist and also um, as known on social media as the Muslim counsellor. So if you do need to get in touch um, with any concerns yeah. or queries. Um, so join me welcoming Sister Barak Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you this morning? Alhamdulillah, yourself? Good. I'm, I just need a bit of caffeine, a bit tired oh, this dear. morning. But um, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get into this topic and I'm hoping that um, you can enlighten us really with, like as I said, there's a lot of misconceptions, not really understanding the core of this. Um, I mean, what I feel is something that's perhaps becoming more prevalent um, and I don't know if it's something that's gender related. Do girls, boys, are they, are they equal? What is self-harm? Um, so really to give us a bit of explanation, understanding, um, you know, what, what would you say, if, the clients that you come across, your experiences in the community? So I work mostly with uh, older teenagers, early adults, uh, mm -hmm. university, second, post-secondary education age. And uh, when we look at uh, self-harm, it could be exhibited in a variety of ways. Usually when you hear self-harm, what comes to your mind? Somebody with a knife and slashing their wrists. Okay, so cutting. Yeah. And that's what's most commonly self-harm is connected to, but there are other ways that people um, practice it, so mm. to speak, as a form of releasing stress. Right. So some people will pick at their skin, causing scabs and scars. Some people will pull hair on their body, including eyelashes. Some people, um, there's a variety, so it's not mm. necessarily just that. And in essence, what it is, is to reduce their stress in an unhealthy way. Right. Right? So what happens is when, and this is what I hear from yeah. the clients when they describe it to me and what we know in our research is initially there's a buildup of stress or there is um, a lot of emotions going on dealing with a situation. It could be at home, friends, family, relationship, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And so for them, they take control of their situation by damaging themselves. Have they tipped over? Sort of you see an analogy of a mug and it's got tea or water. Is it that is that their It's release? reaching mean like the, yeah. the threshold. Yeah. It could very well be, right? They've they've built up the stress so high yeah. that the only way to deal with it is to self harm. Because what happens here when we're talking at the hormonal level is the yeah. built up of stress hormones such as cortisol in their body. Mm. Um, they need a release, which is why we talk about healthy habits of yes. exercise. What happens when you exercise? You get rid of these stress hormones. Endorphins are released into your system, the happy hormones, yeah. adrenaline, which is why you feel great after a workout. So they don't do that. What do they do instead is they cut or engage in other self-harm activities such as burning the skin. Uh -huh. And so what happens initially is that they get that sense of release initially yeah because there's that ah, that relief with the stress wow. hormones right okay with that though you know pain comes after now another aspect to that is i've heard my clients tell me is when they do engage in self-harm the physical pain takes away from their emotional pain for that period for that Just period, that, as long it as they distracts feel the pain? them. Right. The physical pain mm -hmm. distracts them from the emotional pain that they could be experiencing. Goodness, yeah. That's profound. Yeah. That says a lot right there. But it's also unhealthy coping strategies mm -hmm. because there are many healthy ways of dealing with pain of the situation that they're in without inflicting physical pain on their body like this. So when when people are, their intention, so their, their outcome that they're not hoping for is just that, immediate relief of stress so it's not how i would look at it someone who's self-harming wants to really end their life not they, necessarily it, not necessarily no um and is this gender prevalent sort of one towards the other or is it just universal i don't recall at the top of my head the statistics mm. uh, but both genders do engage 
we see more with females who engage in these behaviors. Men tend to be more aggressive in their self-harm uh, mm -hmm. habits, so more violent, right. uh, you could say, more aggressive. But the females, I find, like, and in, in what, I've, what I've seen with my clients, it's mostly been females. Yes. Um, in terms of sort of like, so if, if a person is um, not coping with, so it could be a stress that's in their home, it could be abuse, um, so exercise, while that will give them temporary relief, how would they be expected to, you know, as, as a child, remove themselves from a situation which is happening in their home and they cannot, they have no control over it? So is that a form of control for them, that well, they're harming themselves? That's the thing, right? They, it's an unhealthy way of taking control back of a situation. They don't have control over what's happening around them. Mm. And so that loss leads them to unhealthy habits. And so when in therapy, what we do is we take a look at, because this is also has to do with impulse control. Right. And so we take mm -hmm. a look at going through almost a, a journal and I'll have a, a worksheet for them to go through, to work through the next time you feel yeah. like you may engage in this behavior, what could you do instead? What is going through your mind? What could you replace it? And so we'll go through it in session mm -hmm. and have this as a plan. When, because it's not if, we know it's when. Yeah. When this feeling comes over again, how are you going to deal with it? Let's look at it. And sometimes it may not work yeah. the first time or the second time, but we'll keep going at it. And we don't give too much attention because sometimes clients will come and say, hey, look, look at my cuts, you know, wow. almost proudly displaying it. And so we've been taught as therapists not to give too much attention to that. Why but are they doing that? Why, why is it a, a sign to show you? Is it, is it look at my pain. Help? Look at my pain. Wow. But there, yeah. you know, that could be yeah. one aspect of it. Yeah. Like, look how much pain I'm in. So it's not like we're, we're not validating. It's no. Like, let's, yes, let's now look at ways of coping and yeah. dealing with that so you don't inflict more pain on you. Mm. You know, some students tell me, I don't want to do this. Mm. I'd, I'd rather learn some healthy ways of coping with the the pain that I'm dealing with the stress that I'm dealing with depression anxiety or whatever it may be at the time do you think as a society we're becoming um sort of more, are we more, becoming more delicate that you know when you look at our people from back home they they go through so much don't they and they're not tough. to say they're, they're tough. tough aren't they what is it that are we becoming more delicate are our children being raised in you know are we covering them in cotton wool as they say sort of protecting them but then they go into the harsh reality and they have various um also we've discussed in previous uh, mornings about you know bullying and self you know their own image um of how they portray themselves are they becoming more um exposed to those kind of things that are affecting their mental health i mean what's what do you think is going on from a from your, you're not even like official st um, statistics but as in what would you say was your sort of own take I see now that there is more of a movement and awareness to mental health, what it means and how people are impacted. If we look at this just five to eight years ago, we're nowhere. Uh, mm. Like now we're much further ahead than when we were before. Unfortunately, it has come through mm. very visible suicides through at some point, you know, some people like Robin Williams, for example, yeah. who took his life, even though he was a a person of comedy yeah. on the outside. Internally, he was in a lot of pain. So I find that over the years that when there have been big public cases like that, there's been also a huge um, awareness uh, campaign, so to speak, to combat that. Because as we know, when these things happen, people feel like it's okay to do that. Right, okay. They will exhibit, they will model uh, yeah. the, you know, that behavior because if that person did it, well, yeah. I can do that too yeah. then, right? So you see huge mental health campaigns, whether it's in Canada, we have uh, the Bell Let's Talk, which is a huge uh, telephone mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. and they donate whoever texts that day, uh, I think it's February, I forget which day exactly in February it is. Yeah. Um, and so it's a campaign that encourages people to to use their services to donate on their behalf. To And this money is used for research and mental health awareness. So there's lots of big campaigns like that. Smaller groups like my own group in Ottawa, the, the Serenity Islamic Mental Health Awareness, the work I do through the Muslim Counselor. We're working tirelessly to, to bring yeah. more awareness to, yeah. to mental health issues so that people don't feel the need to mm. hurt and harm themselves, but rather come seek the help to deal with it in a healthy way. And there are many ways to do so. So if somebody recognizes, um, you know, sees, I mean, I, I gather with professionals, they'll recognize the science teachers and people are in, in touch with children, but say somebody's child comes up to them and they, or they find out, the child confides in them, 
And, and as parents, you know, again, denial that, you know, no, no, my child's fine. I, I can't have let my child down. Um, these are quite, you know, emotional, immediate reactions I presume parents would have. So what would you suggest? Is it something that just goes away or is it something that does need to be looked into? It does not go away. Mm. If you don't address this, it could get worse and worse to the point, God forbid, where the child feels they need to take their lives. Yeah. So it's something you need to address right away. First tip for parents, do not freak out. Mm -hmm. Do not be dramatic. Do not frighten your child away if they've come to you. This is a good sign yeah. that they've trust you. They've come to you with something very delicate, as you say. So And they're stressed. And they're stressed. They're stressed. So who do yeah. they turn to if yeah. not you? At least you hope, you know, yeah. the bonding of the relationship that they would do that. Yeah. So they come to you. Listen. Active listening. Do not, you know, deny or, or get upset or mm. make this about you. It's about them. Mm. Listen to what they have to say. Validate. Right? Show compassion. Mm. What can I do to help? Right? So show that. Oh, you know, give them the shoulder to cry on, so to speak. In the back of your mind, you're racing. You are mm. freaking out in here, yeah. of course. And that's normal. That's okay. I would recommend at this point, talk to the social worker at school, the guidance counselor. I'm not sure what they're called here. Yeah. Talk to your family doctor and tell the child, you know, we're going to fix this. We're going to work through this. Because this is something that a professional would need to work through unless you are a trained professional yourself, right? It's, it's hard to do that. But even that would be quite, Even that, yeah. because you're personally engaged, yeah. right? So if you're personally engaged in a situation, it's hard to think straight yeah. because you're emotionally involved. So I do recommend take your child to a doctor, take them to the professionals at school, a counselor, a psychologist, and get the support where they can help them because there's an underlying root to that, mm. right? So, but don't blame yourself, especially if you have been a great parent. Don't blame yourself yeah. for that work with that see where it can get you to provide the proper support and coping strategies for your child not to engage in this behavior okay so it's not something that can be ignored it needs to be dealt with really. absolutely as and as an adult you have that maturity to take it where yes um and i know i don't know about where you live but in the uk it's been a lot of funding cuts with mental health um sort of investment and for the resources and a lot of um sort of you know those resources have been cut back on a local community level and and, and people are suffering they are yes. saying that you know with the increased numbers of even homeless people psychologically what they go through um and so cases like self-harm you know um suicidal thoughts which will be are coming up in future uh, mornings um it's a topic um do you think in our community um so again in funding if something isn't available via your, your general practitioner gp here um that it's something to go on a private basis to somebody um, to, to seek, you know, rather than wait on long waiting lists and your child, you know, quite worried, just to go to directly to somebody like yourself and say, I'm, I'm concerned. And Absolutely, you can do that. Yeah. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know where to go yeah. uh, to a counsellor or where to find a counsellor, um, go to your medical doctor. But mashallah, here in London, you have a plethora of resources in the Muslim community. You can contact Sister Farzana mm -hmm. at Stanmore, right. the Inspirational Minds Program, and she is in contact with Muslim professionals right. here. Okay. And you can tell her that I referred you to yeah. her. Yeah. There's also, like I said, the Muslim Youth Helpline. Call them up and they will also direct you in terms of providing you with support, but also referrals to local resources. Okay. And yes. do you think, a couple last couple of minutes we've got, um, do you think this is happening in our community? It is happening. Mm -hmm. I know it is. I see clients in our community that come yeah. and tell me that they engage in this behavior. Goodness. And so we work on strategies to replace these. Another, an interesting strategy we use is an elastic band around the wrist, right? right? And so whenever they feel the urge, because they want to feel the pain, right? To yeah. distract them away, yeah. snap it. It's obviously not the same yeah. release as the cut, but that snap is that little jolt of pain there. It, it's distracting as well. And they want to feel that, right? But it's not harmful to the body. Is it addictive? self-harm is it so well yes you... because what happens is just like an addiction okay. the chemicals that are released in that moment need to be you know up the ante so to speak right. it needs to get higher and higher in order to reach that level of satisfaction which is right. what happens with an addiction that hit is not enough i need more i need more Goodness. i need more which is why sometimes people accidentally cut themselves deeper right. or burn themselves or it's too much some clients come in and they've ripped off all their eye, uh, eyelashes oh. Right. So it can happen. Yeah. And so that's why we want to engage. And, and it's about behavior activation and using thoughts to engage 
and activate behavior using cognitive behavioral therapy strategies as okay. well. Yeah. So it's almost like deprogramming them, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, Santi. Wow, it's a very deep topic, and I think um, you know, please don't you know, if any parents or young adults or whoever um, may feel that this is their only release um, in any stressful situation, which everybody faces in life, Absolutely. you know, but it's it's dealing with it healthily. Please do contact, um, you know, even your, like, as Sister Barak said, your GP. Um, there are professionals on hand, so do not deny yourself that treatment. Thank you again, once again, and inshallah, we will see you another morning. Another, inshallah, bless another you. Another topic that's. Uh, um, going to be, you know, a very interesting debate um, discussion as we've been having. Have a great day. And next up is um, Dr. Yasser Madani and Alima and myself.